forget that I, almost every time without fail. Hey everyone, welcome back to another weekly stream of the Soulforge Fusion Digital Client with your man Jerch here, head of organized play for Stoneblade Entertainment. Uh, glad to have another week of streaming the digital client for y'all. And we are getting really close to Gen Con season and actually before that, Comic Con. Uh, it, so there's going to be a lot of travel in my immediate future where I'll be showing off Soulforge Fusion and the other Stoneblade games to uh, hundreds, if not thousands of people uh, traveling all across the country and hopefully seeing a lot of, of you all there um, uh, just enjoying enjoying this game we love, this community that we're growing and, and having a great time. <coughs> Whew. Uh, let's see. Aunt Gaming chiming in. Next week is the big week. Yeah. Well, actually, this week, uh, I am traveling to San Diego for Comic-Con. And that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Stoneblade is going to be demoing You Gotta Be Kitting Me. It's going to be demoing the new Ascension Legends game, which is dropping on GameFound this week. This, uh, let's see, today's Monday, Tuesday, this Wednesday. So that's really exciting because that's the first expansion to Ascension in like three years. Uh, and that's super exciting. I think it's in the top five for GameFound. Uh, I don't know what metric they're using to, to measure, but interest right now, uh, I think it's in the top five, which is really, really cool. So we're going to be demoing that at Comic-Con. We're going to be playing You Gotta Be Kitting Me. And then we're going to be doing a little bit of Soulforge Fusion digital client stuff because the more people we get into this game the better and it's a really fun game that i light up every time i'm talking to people about it so that is this upcoming week and i'm uh technically not getting back home until monday and then tuesday we're heading out to indianapolis for gen con so it's going to be a very very quick turnaround uh thankfully i'm flying out to california but i am driving uh, actually miss misery and i are driving to Gen Con, which means that with, with that short window of turnaround time and uh, just a really tight schedule, some other things going on, I won't be streaming next week. We'll see if we can get somebody else that wants to come in and uh, take over for me. I've got a couple options, but I'll, I'll reach out to those people in the next couple of days. But uh, because I will be uh, a, a rambling man, um, I'll need to have somebody fill in for me. So uh, this is the last time I'll be streaming in July. And uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll be in too much transition in order to be uh, streaming next week. And part of that is, I mean, not part of that. The reason is because we've got Gen Con next week. And that is uh, the, the Super Bowl, the World Series, the uh, Scripps National Spelling Bee of board gaming. Uh, and it'll, it'll be so cool to see so many people. Uh, hopefully, you all, people can can make it out. Let's see how many people we got viewing right now. We're already up to nine people. Okay. So it, anybody, uh, I am an extrovert. So I get energy from being around people. I love just seeing people for the first time, for the 10th time, for the 100th time. And uh, I, I really am excited to engage with this community in person. I know that uh, the way that I can engage here is one thing, but it's not quite as much fun as being able to see y'all in person. Uh, so anybody that sees this this video uh, between now and you know whenever, don't hesitate to come up and say hi to me. I even if I look like I'm busy, I probably am, but I'm not too busy. I, I love talking to people, saying hi, putting faces to names and Discord names and, and uh, interactions with people. And uh, so I, I really want to encourage people to come up and say hi to me. And I, I want to talk to you for a minute. I want to talk to you for an hour. But it's just Gen Con is so much fun for me. Most people that I know in this community, I've met through cons like, like Gen Con or uh, some of the PAX events or... Uh, TCG cons or or whatever. So uh, this is a place of connection and a, a lot of importance to me. So I know that for almost all of Gen Con, I'm going to be at Lucas Oil Field uh, or Lucas Oil Stadium 
because that's where the events for Soulforge Fusion are taking place and uh, all the other Stoneblade tournaments, uh, the Ascension, Ascension Tactics. Um, we have worlds for Shards of Infinity and then uh, any demos of like, you gotta be kidding me and stuff like that. All of those are gonna be taking place at the Fieldhouse. And I don't know exactly where we're placed and I don't think we will know until I physically get there. So uh, I will be... As soon as I know where we are, I'll be sending that message, those messages to our social media account. So then that'll help anybody find us. And that's another great opportunity to plug the, the Stoneblade Entertainment Twitter account, uh, because that's where you'll get more pinpointed information on, on where you'll be able to find me and the events that we've got going on for Gen Con. Uh, but the, the booth number, if you're going to want to visit the the Stoneblade Entertainment booth, that is booth 3019. And that's where you're going to be able to see everybody else. Uh, I know Justin's going to be popping in and out of there. Justin Gary. Uh, we're going to have Lucas that's going to be there, who does the Wednesday night streams, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time. So make sure to check those out. Uh, and just a, a whole slew of other people that are in front of the scenes or behind the scenes that make games like Soulforge Fusion possible. So going over there and talking to them and just, you know, thanking them for what they do. And then also kind of picking their brains on stuff. Uh, it, it makes it a much more enriching experience. I know is when you can start to get human stories from people and things like that. So uh, very, very, very excited for all of that. Um, to reiterate, because this is my last stream before Gen Con, if you are trying to sign up for any Soulforge Fusion events, you need to first get a ticket through the uh, Gen Con website. That, that's where you go first, and if those tickets are sold out, uh, then that means that that event is closed. There were some uh, issues that, uh, in terms of like our play space size, that we didn't know what was going to be allocated to us. And then, uh, not to say disparaging things, because I, I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to point blame or, or anything like that, but uh, based on the information that Gen Con was working with and the decisions they made, they cut smaller some of our events in terms of number and in terms of size. So uh, I think that uh, we have three official sealed events that are going on for Soul Forge Fusion, and I sadly believe that they are all capped at eight people. Um, so if you wanted to be running other sealed events, well, I, I know for starters, we have so many things going on at the event space that uh, I don't think we're going to have physically enough space to be able to run larger scale events. If when we get there, when, when, when I get there uh, next week, and I'm, I'm, I find that we do have enough space, I can start to finagle to potentially throw in some other Soulforge Fusion sealed events, and we'll see if that ruffles some feathers with Gen Con people, or if they'll kind of let us do it. But as of right now, I think we just had the space, or we were just allocated the space to run three sealed events, and all those are happening on Friday. Let me check that. Uh, because I want to be disseminating the proper information. And I, I know I should have this information memorized, but... Okay, let's actually just go with my calendar. Gen Con schedule, there we go. Okay, so we got an on-air production meeting for y'all. You get to really see behind the scenes. And I, I know that there's a lot of administrative stuff that I'm sharing right now, but uh, I want to do that in order to make sure that I am disseminating the correct information. So, yes, Thursday we have the three sealed events because Friday is the storyline and Saturday is the world championship, the, the constructed world championship. So uh, we didn't really have space to, to try to do a, uh, a large sealed event this time, uh, because I, I, we've got so many other things going on. We, like I said, we've got world championships for three other games. We're demoing, you gotta be kidding me as well, doing a lot of learn to plays for that. So, 
uh, just with the the staff and the space that was allocated to us. I it oh I think we also might have a a Sunday sealed pod, but um, and and Anka Gaming is definitely corroborating all of that information, so that's that's good. But uh, we just ran out of to space to be able to do a large scale sealed, and um, if if there is enough interest for individuals or groups of people that want to be doing their own side sealed events, talk to me uh, at Gen Con and we'll see if we can do some things that won't get me in trouble, but that we'll still be able to, to do some fun sealed events. So um, we will we will try to figure that out, but uh, we do have three Saturday sealed events. We have, I'm sorry, not Saturday, three Thursday sealed events Friday is the storyline, Saturday is the constructed worlds, and then Sunday we were able to squeeze in another sealed pot of eight. So uh, I haven't made those events on Soulforge Fusion, the events page yet, because I didn't want to confuse people, because you have to buy the ticket through Gen Con. So uh, I think a, a few of those sealed have already filled up, but whatever is available, if you buy the ticket through the, the Gen Con site, then I will be making those events and importing those lists. So if you're going through the proper channels, you will be guaranteed your spot in the corresponding event. Uh, and so just trying to, to make sure that this works. This is my first time running Gen Con. So uh, I'm also trying uh, figuring it out. So I, I know that this community is great and very gracious. We're all on the same page or on the, the same team, just trying to figure out how to make this all work smoothly and equitably and uh, get everybody the stuff that they're playing as much Soul Forge as humanly possible. Uh, I do, oh, I could spoil that, but I don't have it in my office. Uh, it was requested last week that I spoil uh, Minion and I don't have any of the con exclusive Minions with me. They're, they're with the, the shipping stuff which is in Kentucky. Uh, but I do have the new play mat that we will be selling at Gen Con. So uh, as long as it wouldn't be too awkward at some point tonight, I can go run down to the garage and, <laughs> and grab one of those play mats if, uh, if we get a lull. Otherwise, I, I'll see if I can get that artwork up. But uh, it's it's very cool stuff. It is highlighting the the last winter, and I believe it's got Sunder on it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so we'll see if I if I can have a little window of time to to show that off. But uh, without further ado, I think we can jump into the actual client itself and start playing a little bit. There was a, a recent update which also offers some really cool stuff, and this is the addition of gold, this currency that we've got here which is the fun design space that we have been talking about behind the scenes for this is going to be so cool. I am so excited for all of the fun different things that we can do. I'm going to have to tread lightly when I'm talking about this because I won't want to uh, say something that I'm not supposed to. But uh, this, this gold is going to be able to buy in-game stuff, uh, consumables like the potions that we have seen uh or, or that some of you have seen that then here let's see if i can bring this all the way back because i didn't claim all these that we've got these new mastery chests so i'm going to claim a couple of them and we're going to see what we get attempting to claim reward oh a health potion there we go so that is one of the new items that you can be buying for gold or that you can be opening like this. This health potion is something that you can crack during a campaign run and you will be able to get plus 25 health for the next battle that you fight. So I'm definitely gonna claim that. I like running or, or trying to run the, the campaign on level 10, which reduces your starting health to 35 and then uh, there's that one bonus, which I can't remember the name of it, but one of the bonus nodes gives all your creatures plus two, plus two, but you start with 30 less health, so then you'd start with five health, and and then a, a health potion like that kind of buoys your run a little bit. 
But most of these chests are going to have gold coins in there. Uh, let's see if I can get all three of the potions that we have available. We've got a health potion. We have a strength potion, which is going to be giving uh, all of your creatures. I think it, I can't remember if it was plus two or plus three attack for the next campaign or the, uh, the next battle in the campaign. Right now, these are only usable in the campaign. And then the speed potion gives all of your creatures aggressive for the, the next campaign. Uh, the, the, the next campaign battle. So uh, there are a bunch of other things that are in the process of being uh, concocted for what you could be spending gold on, what you could be getting out of those mastery chests. Uh, so there, I mean, your imaginations can start to run wild. If we can give creatures aggressive, you can think what else we can give them. If we can give you plus health at the start of a battle, think what else we can do with that. And then there are going to be other options of other things that potions can be used for. So uh, at the risk of Justin Gary coming to my house and putting a, a sackcloth over my head and then punishing me for spilling too much. I can't say too much more right now of what these, uh, what else these could be, but there's a lot of fun things that are on the way and we're just making sure that they can work properly and that they are, are working correctly in the game. But if I wanted to, I could go to the shop and we've got the, the same bundles. I haven't opened my, phantom deck for this month so i might do that now but then you can be buying these potions down here come on internet yeah so the health the speed and the strength are all 300 gold niles ammon i wish i could crack potions against jerch in q <laughs> well <laughs> you tip you probably won't need them against me in q i wish i could crack them against strong opponents in q so if you're facing against somebody like onk who usually is coming up with something crazy and off the wall in the in the queue. But me, I, I typically am, am bringing things that are, are fun, but they are typically commiserate with my skill level, which is mediocre at best. I was playing Dazzling Numbers earlier. That's one of my mages deck. But when I posted in the Discord, uh, there were some Nuwata decks that I wanted to try out. So I've got four different pairings, Nuada, Nuados, Nuatres, and Nuatro. So I'm just going to run down the line and test out some of these. And I'll, I'll, I'll do one each in the queue because it's been 20 minutes and you haven't seen me play any Soul Forge yet. Uh, Hectares, please not pay to win in queue. T to, to confirm, uh, those potions are not for queued up battles. They're not for... Uh, playing against other human beings, it is only for the campaign. These are only for the, the single player experience. Yeah, the, the those, we are not coming up with a model that is going to negatively affect the head-to-head -head player experience. So yes, don't, don't worry that people are going to be buying these potions and using them against you in the queue. That's not a thing. Oh, Iron Bryce! All right. Any surprises so far in stream? Uh, I don't know. I haven't revealed anything yet in the, the stream, uh, Solomer. I think what I'm going to try to reveal is the, the play mats. Oh, come on, Bryce. <laughs> the, uh, the play mats that will be on sale at Gen Con, but it'll be kind of awkward because I'll have to run down to the garage in order to pull one of those out. So uh, it might be a moment or two of dead air. So I'll need people in the 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 stream to uh, to kind of cover for me for a second. Do I want to get rid of my wisp minion for three health? It's really early, but I like the body because I'm guessing if my opponent's going to block. The spider lane, then I get two free damage, so it's almost a three three health exchange anyways. Anyway, oh, um, to show off my decks, is all four of these are dealing with the same Oros. And then I found uh, four different Necrium to pair with it, because 
in this, I have Nuada, Fates Flourish, which plays Nuada's Garden, and then the other Nuadas are when you play a creature in an empty lane, you're gaining health. This is still kind of bugged in the client because the digital client understands empty lane as it doesn't have a creature or an exalt, but this is, is meant to be an, an empty lane is only when there's no creature in it. So this doesn't proc as much as, oh, I'm sorry, Bryce. Uh, this doesn't proc as much as it should in the digital client, but I'm not complaining, it's gonna be fun. Uh, and I have this with Carnivorous Taro, which gains health, and then whenever you gain health, this gains attack and health. To show off, uh, Nuada's Garden is the first time you gain health each turn, you may play Wisp Minion in this lane, and then you can activate it if all your lanes are full to transform this and play Oak Guardian, which is a 10-10 with Breakthrough. Aha, and Iron Bryce put Apocamancer against my Wisp, took the three damage, and then now probably has some Apocamancer shenanigans to do. Yeah, there it is. I don't think I own a Nuada. Yeah, and I know that all of uh, my European friends uh, have told me multiple times that I pronounce it incorrectly, and they're so gracious in trying to uh, help me pronounce it correctly, and I, I still can't seem to do that. <laughs> but I keep trying. Apocamancer is the flavor of the month. It can be super strong. Apocamancer can be very, very strong. Uh, Niles Ammon, a uh, question, but does the 10-10 also transform back upon dying like a certain Tempest mistake? Uh, no, it does not. When that, that Oak Guardian is destroyed, then it's donezo. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll save that Keeper because I might end up playing the Shard Plate Behemoth too. Uh, another fun aspect of the Utera half, which is the, uh, the half that I'm trying to highlight for this, is I've got two roaring creatures. And I, I don't want to take away too much from the screen from what my opponent's going to be doing. But uh, I've got a roaring keeper and a betrayer roaring slime. So that is a creature that works also like a spell because it's giving attack and health to a creature as we're going along. Ah, uh, there we go. Arrogant Druid. Oh. Okay. Well, we're going to go like this and get both of those two buffed a little bit more. All right. Not great right there. But... Now we've got Noada, which I want to get into play. And Noada's Garden, I'll just throw that over in an empty lane. Something out of the way. Uh, so what I did is I took a, uh, a few of my best, or what I thought were my best pairing decks for this, and I'll slowly work up to what I think is the best pairing for it. But uh, I went with at least one deck from each set. So this one has a Dark Shaper Savant because if I can keep gaining health, then this Nuada's Garden keeps playing a level one creature. And then that level one creature then procs with Dark Shaper Savant, which I think is pretty nice. <laughs> uh, Solomer, uh, I played someone last month who got it flipped cycle one against me. I had no answer. Yes. In, in some of my more ruthless iterations of this uh i'm able to flip this rather quickly and and then uh that puts my opponent in a difficult spot but a lot of times i don't want to flip this because then i get a creature instead and i would rather something that is continually uh giving me value of a free creature just whenever I'm gaining health. And there's so much opportunity for health gain in the Zutera half that it's, it's almost printing free creatures. All right. I got bones of solace now. 
Dark Shaper Savant, I might need to be getting out here so then I can start to... I think I might do Dark Shaper Savant into Sacrifice Chamber because that, that will then get me one proc, which can destroy this, which uh, then on the slay, I would gain health. Oh. Shooty shoot. Well, I wanted to do that. Choose, oh, this is going to be nasty because they might uh, reanimate this druid to get a bunch of procs. So I have to make a business decision and just destroy that creature right there. Because that was not going to end well for me. Yeah, but get a Pachamancer out of the way, then, I mean, my opponent's still going to have a, a big board, but at the very least, I'm, I'm going to have health still. Because I, I could totally see how that would result in three, four, five replacements in one turn. Oh, there you go. Yep. That would have been real bad. Okay. So we can trade there. Let's deal some damage. And I wouldn't be surprised. See, now this is where I'm not uh, well-versed enough or have enough experience knowing where to put this hematophagic creeper to bait my opponent into a poor decision. Because I could put it here to then trade, or I can put it here to win the trade and keep a creature around. But then if they're just going to destroy the creature that's up opposite it anyways, let's go here and put them in a bad spot. So either... Take six damage, or very likely destroy the creature that's opposing this. And I'm not going to do the same. I'm not going to destroy my creature to then gain four health. Yeah. Okay. So we've got Carnivorous Taro here. And I think we have to start this way. Gain health there, confirm that. And I should have used my Forgeborn ability before when I knew that a creature was getting destroyed. So then I would have uh, started to, to get some of this, the Bones of Solace proccing going. Ooh, this is a really good question from Niles. So Lucas got his Madla Winter card. Are you getting a card in future sets? And if so, what is your ability? <laughs> I think I'm already in the game. Right here. <laughs> I think I'm already in the game as a Wisp minion. <laughs> nice and mediocre. I think I think that's what I bring to the table. Uh, but in, in all seriousness, it would be so cool to be in this game. I tried to get in as a player by, uh, if you, you win one of the, the high level events, uh, one of the ultimate, uh, ultimate challenge events, then you get your likeness on a future card. So I would have loved to have been able to do that, but, uh, I was not up to that caliber of, of player in order to win one of those. So I I honestly would like to be some sort of of a creature that is under the radar and just show, shows up all the time and and uh, I haven't thought about having a, a good ability or a bad ability or anything like that but uh, I I think I also talked about this with the uh, with my brother-in-law fizzle sticks that ooh not good. Uh, well, let's go this way first. 
that we would be a, a soul bind pair, that us two would be a a card together. So I would I would love for that. And he could be, for all I care, he could be the the good part of the card. Let's find a better spot for this. And then I would just be the the soul bind that comes in out of play every time. And I can be as mediocre as we would like, but it'd be really cool to to have a, a partnered card with my brother-in-law and the 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 co-hosts of the podcast we used to do together. Uh oh. Oh, bring him back, Grove Mother now, right? Yeah. Yep, this is gonna be a problem. <sighs> Playing Oak Father Minion. Interesting order of operations here. Okay. Well, nice trick. <laughs> nice trick. I'm just going to Blight Skull Bomb. And then give this enough to not stick around. <laughs> Uh, Ankh Gaming, is likeness on a card part of Worlds this year, or is that gone by the wayside? That is definitely still on the table, yes. Uh, I don't remember if I have that in the event description, but if you win Worlds, you get your likeness on a future card. I have seen the the artwork for Nathus, last year's world champion. I don't know if I can announce what set that's coming up in, uh, or any of that other good stuff but uh that is still absolutely on the table for for winning worlds and i do know that they work on that art and i think a lot of the ones from the last year or so are going to start showing up in in waves very soon okay so let's see bryce's forgeborn ability play mega gizmo minion and mine is switch the I don't know if this one's working still or yet. So I am probably not going to use that Forge Born ability, possibly to my own demise. Hmm. Announce it, Justin isn't here now. <laughs> I can't announce it yet. Okay, so I think we're going to go like this. And it's not going to be great. Uh, I'm circling the drain right here. Yep, touche. Still get to pop that. Um, that actually shouldn't have worked. Oh, whoops. I should not have been able to get that trigger because the Dark Shaper Savant was out of play by the time that level one creature comes into play. Yep. He doesn't have to know, <laughs> but I would know. And, and I, I couldn't handle that kind of responsibility. Yep. That would be too much for me to bear. Um, but I, 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 so I've seen the art to a, a couple of the, um, the artist renditions. So a, a couple of the cards that, uh, for winning players and, then that's going to be in the near future in terms of sets. I'm not saying in terms of calendar date. Uh, so there are multiple ones that are coming down the pipe. Uh, I know that we had the two creches, core and KC kid that uh, earned their likeness in back-to-back -back sets. I don't know if they're coming out in the same set, or if that's going to be more of like a storyline, like we're going to get core first and then the next set we're going to get KC kid because that's the order that they finished or, or the order that they, that the cards were awarded. But, uh, so we'll have to see on that front, but I, I do know that they're coming up in very soon sets. Okay. To, to briefly talk a little bit about these decks. Uh, so yeah, as you saw that the Utera, likes a lot of procs of health gain. It doesn't need a large amount of health gain because 
whenever you're gaining health, then this Taro is growing. And I also have Feral Instinct, which can give it breakthrough. So that's kind of a so what related to a creature that grows really, really big. It can't just be chump blocked. Um, and then it's mostly just getting out other creatures. Hopefully I can at least see the level two Nuada to be gaining health whenever I'm putting a creature in an open lane. Uh, so then I'm trying to pair it with a, an Ecrium half that is going to be gaining health little bits at a time. So the Hematophagic Creeper, Hematophagic, get, uh, allows me to destroy another one of my creatures to gain health. The Vampiric Meba on deploy, deal damage, gain health. And then anything that's in the, the lane of the Exalt Sacrifice Chamber, then whenever that slays, gaining health. Uh, I also like the opportunity Dreadbolt with the, the hard removal and then possibly things that are cards that are reanimating. So like Dark Pryings or potentially Restless Dead, even though I don't have a lot of great spirits for this. Uh, if I have any at all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Spiteful Death Seeker and Spiteful is still bugged. So then that part doesn't even work. So... Uh, this was the, the set three one. I might switch that over to Oros with Shapeshift and uh, Spirit Bond. Because I, I think Shapeshift is then actually probably useful for me. But uh, that was Nuatro. That was the, the fourth using set three. Good game, Jerch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Iron Bryce. Uh, I also want to apologize because I don't think my Dark Shaper Savant should have procced when you botanimated it. So that was my mistake for giving the minus one, minus one to a creature and one that ended up destroying it. So uh, as a, a constant student of the game, I will make sure that I don't make that mistake again, or I'll do the best that I can on that. Yeah, but that was a good game. Uh, I liked all the replacement stuff. That's okay, I knew that was a bug. Yeah. I like the replacement stuff that your deck was doing, and it definitely kept me off balance a lot. So we're working our way up the ladder of my Nuadas. Found a match here. Also against Iron Bryce. A uh, different deck now. So this one, I have a Cersei that's got Life Drain, so it's gaining health and then Death Touch, so we've got some hard removal. I, I As we get close to Gen Con and Worlds, I cannot stress how important it is to have hard removal. Uh, the This Necrium half does a lot to try to bring back my important life gainers. So got a Stitcher, Blight Witch, Cutthroat Walker, Darkheart Sorcerer could be gaining a lot of health quickly. Uh, and then on the, the spell side, Virix Embrace and Zrath's Will is really deadly to, to be able to go against for people. So... Uh, I, with all of the, the tiny ways to be gaining health, then Zrath's Will is free almost every single time. I think, ooh, with the way this sets up, I might be able to Taro into Zrath's Will for free, into Blight Witch to activate to then go Feral Instinct. And that's dumping four cards in the first hand. But I'm not playing that dress bill. Oh, boo. Then playing two spells. Nice. Okay. So then which way do I want to go with that? I think we have to go this way. Dress will for free. Activate this. Destroy in order to play level one spell. So it gives it Three attack and three armor this turn. The breakthrough doesn't work because I'm in the back. But the rest of this stuff is going to take out a fairly strong level one creature. Gorgeous, welcome! All right, so let's see. I only have... Well, I do have that Taro there. So I think... I can group meal into the Stitcher to bring back the Taro. 
Yeah, let's try that. All right. So this version moves a lot faster because group meal you're able to upgrade and I've got a lot of zombies that uh, help things like group meal upgrade faster. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, so uh, the agenda for today or, or, or tonight was doing a, a more detailed rundown of everything that's going to be at Gen Con and then also talking about some spoilers which I think I can spoil what the playmats are going to look like for Gen Con. And then, uh, let's see. Oh, we've got uh, spam on there. And I on my phone, I'm not able to delete that. So everybody just ignore that. That's great. Um, but, God, just, you just reminded me that uh i should address the the situation with the sealed events and the the decks and stuff like that so uh, <laughs> playing a spell get that bigger um well god just you can go back and watch it after it'll be uploaded to youtube tonight after we're done streaming uh so anyways what happened with the the sealed deck codes is there is is something programmed into it for like with the the timer for the the decks being temporary decks and i think there was an issue that was coming about especially for people in different time zones where it was yeah good call getting rid of that <laughs> getting rid of the blight witch causing lots of problems Oh my, somebody's got a plane to catch. Well, I need to get Nuada out. Like that. And then we're gonna put the garden over there. So anyways, um... <laughs> Niles, you're too kind. Hey Zoe Misery, uh, Niles said, you missed Jurch spoilering his own card. He's becoming a new Forgeborn in set five. <laughs> if only. Okay, so now I need to be delicate with this here. Because I'm going to go like this. The Cutthroat Walker, this is one of my favorites. It's a super weak creature. And I'll get back to the uh, sealed story. But it allows me to give an enemy creature minus attack and health. And then it allows me to cutthroat. But I'm not actually going to cutthroat right now because I'm in a pretty good board state. So even though that Dark Heart Sorcerer could be a problem, I'm not too worried about it because I'm going to win both the trades that my creatures are involved in. And yeah, we'll shamble a couple of times, but I'm okay with that. Uh, so anyways, back to the, the deck codes. Um, oh, this is so nice because I've got Virix Embrace and then Zrath's Will again. So then I'm going to do something that is going to turn the tide. So we're going to go like this. Carnivorous Taro gets to grow. And then I get to put a minion there. Zeras will. I've got all my lanes filled up, so I'm going to transform that into Oak Guardian, which is hopefully going to take out this Dark Heart Sorcerer because before it becomes a problem. Uh, so, anyways, uh, there's something in the coding of the the temporary decks that is causing players to, when they redeem the codes, that they don't actually show up in their in the digital client and uh until we can get that figured out uh we just have we're working on how to fix the problem so then we can continue to run events uh sealed events so it may be that we're going to be figuring out uh an alternative like uh we may be 
doing uh, more constructed events, or we may be doing sealed events that they're not temporary decks. So let's go like this, cutthroat. We'll get rid of one zombie for another. And then I'll just knock that right down. Uh, so we are, we're working on that right now, figuring out what the, the coding issue is and then how soon we can be up and running and uh, events might just be taking a different form. So uh, I am going to redo tomorrow night's event to make it a constructed event. And then uh, we'll kind of address in terms of like the Tuesday night and the Thursday afternoon events, uh, what they're gonna look like, at least in the interim until we can get this issue figured out. It's also gonna be kind of difficult because I'm going to be traveling and running a lot of events. And I mean, I'm going to be at Comic Con, then Gen Con over the next two weeks. So uh, it, it's, we're working on a, a solution and uh, we're just, we're, we're trying to make it work and, and work for everybody. But uh, I think that we might be doing some, some different things in the interim to, to make it work where people can still be playing at events. Godges, do you consider the $5 sealed events a success? Well, absolutely. I think unequivocally, they have been a success by my metric in that we are having upwards of a dozen people participating every single event. We have, let's see, what do I want to do here? That Stitcher's not going to do me any good. Let's go like that. Uh, I, I think that it's not only rewarding people who are engaging in the community with discounts on product, but it's also challenging a wide array of players to learn how to evaluate cards on the spot and how to find hidden value in cards or decks that they might not normally really place a lot of importance on. So, uh... I, sealed is one of the, the I think, the funnest ways in order to, to play this game. And uh, being able to do it at a, a price that is uh, engaging and exciting and that there are low stakes, I think is a really important and valuable component to the Soul Forge Fusion community. Ooh, and then we've got people weighing in on this. So I'm, I'm going to read all these. Comment. Oh no, Iron Price is trying to boat race me. Okay, so let's see. Um, I've got 11 showing and then 16 coming back. I, th I was planning on replacing here to have 18 and then give another creature plus two plus two. So you know what? Let's dance. <laughs> Let's dance. Boom. Give another creature plus two plus two. Uh, I'll go with the Oak Guardian. So let's let's see what you all have been thinking on this. And we'll go there to gain a little bit of health because we're going to need it. Viper Dave, I think for the sealed events, you should have the players keep the decks they get and award prizes on top. We need more people playing this game online. There are many times that I'm online and nobody is there to play. So you all need to come up with something to get people to try and play the game online. Otherwise, you'll get new players that want to play and nobody is there to play and they lose interest and leave. Yeah, uh, that is definitely a, a component of it. I think it's a, a balancing act. Because if we're putting prizes on top of giving people decks, then we have to raise the price. Uh, because it, it costs time and energy. I know that there's an algorithm that can come up with the codes, but it costs time and energy of, of people in order to make the code something that players can redeem. And, you know, then also if, if we are having all of these events and product that we're giving away without any cost, then it... I think that is similar to what hurt the original Soul Forge. And I didn't play the original Soul Forge, but 
Uh, oh, that's right, Forgeborn ability. I probably want to do that at some point. Uh, yeah, let's deal four damage to a creature and gain four health. And then uh, we can group meal right there. And I get to upgrade a card. That's where I want that to be. Uh, I think that one's going to be just fine. So let's do Virix Embrace. Uh, and, and I agree that we're in a, a very delicate time for trying to increase participation. And I am open to ideas. If people want to be shooting me direct messages on Discord, where I'm Jerch, you can find me there. Uh, or if they want to email op at stoneblade.com, then w with your ideas, I would love to engage in conversation for what is going to be getting more people involved. And because uh, we want to be growing the community, we want to be doing right by the player base, and uh, I'm open to any and all insights and suggestions. Disclaimer is that in the next two weeks, I'm mentally booked up. <laughs> so there's not much that I'm going to be able to really get to or address, but uh, I will be able to to read them and start to like reach out to people and, and see what they think. So let's get to more uh more feedback on this gorgeous same i think they're the best events to date solomer they're great events i'd rather see the free app the app free though and have the sealed events be ten dollars each and five dollars to keep your decks uh if you don't win too so that that then if we're changing the the business model there are then that if we're changing the variables in the equation then it's it's going to uh, change a lot of the math in the the process. So there are obviously alternative options, but those are done by decision makers that are above my pay grade. So um, if if the the model shifts, then there would be a recalibration for the the cost of oh my infernal ritual. <laughs> Well, 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 well. How much damage can I take? I would prefer for it to be n not a lot. So if we go shard plate behemoth, trade, I lose my creature. Or I can take a net 18. To go like this. And then I'll have and it'll be two creatures to two, but I'll still have my ways to be gaining life. All right. And Let's start this here. I think if I do, ooh, this is gonna be tricky. Okay, so we're gonna sack Noada to play a spell, which is gonna be Feral Instinct there, dealing three damage, gaining three health. I get to play a level one or two card for free. Confirm, that's gonna be the spell Patriarch's Binding, which then it doesn't matter what's coming out because that was another spell that then does three damage to finish off my opponent just by the hair of my chinny chin chin <laughs> all right uh okay uh let's see uh, i got a lot to get caught up on my uh solomer then kind of goes into more detail my idea keeps the cost the same, uh, but helps bring in additional revenue to offset the app not costing anything. If people who paid are upset, maybe Stoneblade can give people one free entry to a sealed event. Uh, yeah, there, I, options for 
I, I mean, all, all options are have been thought about by the, the people who are the decision makers. So uh, I know that the powers that be are aware of the discussions that happen in the community and nothing is ignored. So uh, Stoneblade, everybody that is involved in this process are uh, excited to make this game what the community wants it to be. So uh, everybody is paying attention and looking at feedback. So uh, if there's some things that are important to you, make sure that you are continuing to voice them and uh, you know, then, then we take that as data and are, are making the decisions that we feel are best. So um, yeah, in, in terms of that, but uh, that is a, a, a grander scale that needs to be run up the flagpole higher than myself. Uh, Gorgeous. what are your thoughts on Rules 2.0? Have you had a chance to read through everything yet? Uh, and then I missed uh, a way to win earlier. Portal Shade plus Forgeborn's Lethal, done goofed, son. Yep. <laughs> My bad. Oh, hey, Carl Testa. All right. Okay, so this version, Nua Dos. I've got uh, Cersei with Death Touch and Life Drain. And I've got a, a Stitcher then to try to bring back excuse me, the important cards, Cutthroat, one of my favorite modifiers right now. It's really, really important. As we'll see the rest of the night, uh, a Gloom Reaper Hag has the ability to be gaining health to then proc with all of the Uterra things I got going on. Spite Maiden for a little bit of soft spell slinging. It's going to cost me health, but I'm going to have health to spare. So it's trying to get those spells out that are going to be helpful. Those spells being, again, Virix Embrace and Zras Will are just wonderful it opens me up to being able to do some more of uh, the other spells that I want. And uh, Epidemic, maybe if I need to be uh, trimming the board a little bit. Oh, this is a terrible starting hand. Because I've got my board, board reduction, a removal, and then my minion cards. <laughs> so we're just going to start with Gloom Reaper Hag and... See how my opponent's going to respond. Uh, but going back to, to rules 2.0, uh, Fletch has been schooling me on them to make sure that I... Is that going to... That's not going to be great. Making sure that I am understanding everything that is going to be going on. Because, uh, I mean, obviously it's sort of organized play. I need to know all the, the corner cases for all the rules. And... It's fun to listen to the instances that people bring up and uh, a lot of the, the instances that Fletch brought up to me because there are so, so many people in this community that are much more clever than I am. And hearing those cases is always exciting and it keeps me on my toes. So uh, I actually am coming out with an article that I'm going to be posting tonight, so after this stream, that illustrates some of the more functional uh, corner cases in the, the rules 2.0. So it, the, these rules are all like clarification on stuff. Ooh, let's see, how do I wanna do this? And there are, so there with uh, the third set that there's a lot of things that then have kind of been brought to light or, you know, there's not necessarily fixes so much as like just kind of updates and, and things like that. I guess fixes might be a little bit better of a term. But anyways, uh, I'm coming out with an article that is going to illustrate some of the, the more popular cases of this. Hmm. Okay, so I got that. Taro gain, that gain. And Solomer, I'm I'm getting caught way up. I know I'm way behind on this. <laughs> I know it changes the model, but they need to hear alternatives. I'm happy to write something up and send it to you. I'll do that tomorrow, and you can pass it along when you have time. I know you're busy. Ooh, ooh no. 
No life gain cards with Zerath's Will is my only spell since Spite Maiden isn't doing a whole lot of work. That's not so good. Well, let's put the Forsaken Banshee there, and then we're probably going to have to put one of my two, probably the Esperian Steel Plate, in Nawada's lane to block the Rune Scarred Zombie Brute. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, what are a few examples? Uh, let's see. So, uh, one of the big examples that uh, is just clarification for me is something like Blight Witch, where it says activate, destroy one of your other creatures to play a level one spell for free, or at the level two, it's to play a level one or level two spell for free. And with those, if you aren't able to do both pieces of the puzzle, you can't do that activate ability. So if you have a level one Blight Witch out and you activate it to destroy one of your creatures, but you don't have a level one spell in hand, then you can't do that activate ability. You can't just activate to destroy one of your creatures if you cannot fulfill the other piece of that puzzle. And, and vice versa, obviously, if you activate a level one Blight Witch and you don't have another creature to destroy, then you can't play a level one spell for free. That is one of the, the first examples that sticks out to me is is something like that is the the kind of the the clauses or the two halves of statements that come with the word two um i think another one that is worth highlighting is the order of, man just going to town on me with that <laughs> um i think think I need to just epidemic right now oh that did not work out like I'd hoped <laughs> uh, another example is in terms of replacing a creature so things like spring dryad or Drix levels two and three don't see themselves replaced so then you don't get the proc off of the the new creature coming into re, in, into play or the new creature that is like replacing. Oh, I don't want to do Nuata now. That's really going to hurt. Well, let's destroy that because that's going to save me a little bit. Oh, that's not going to save me a lot. Oh, no. Uh, but things like Dark Shaper do. Okay, so um, so here here is the the order of operations for this. If you're replacing a creature, uh, is that you designate where your creature coming into play is going to go, and if there's a creature there, then that creature goes to the banish pile. After that creature is in the banish pile, in it's in a different zone, then you put the new creature into play. So. Uh, Dark Shaper Savant does not work differently. That's how Dark Shaper Savant works as well. As far as, as far as I understand it, Dark Shaper Savant also, um, that one should not trigger when itself is being replaced. That when that happened, uh, for me against Iron Bryce is, I wasn't thinking but when he replaced my Dark Shaper Savant with a, a Wisp Minion, or technically I replaced it with a Wisp Minion, uh, that I should not have been able to give a creature minus one, minus one. So that the fact that the digital client let me do that is a bug. So uh, Dark Shaper Savant, it will still... Tr Uh, oh, according to Fletch, that one still triggers. Oh, let me see if I can understand why. Um, then that is going to be something that I have to check with Fletch because that then is counterintuitive to what I understand 
because action of playing a card happens before replacing takes place. Okay, so you're playing the card, but it doesn't count as a creature being in play. That's one that I am going to see if I can make as a late addition to the article. Dark Shaper. Doesn't follow those rules. Okay. You play a card before a card comes into play. Okay, so that is one that I think is going to be really important for me to add clarification to. Uh, ooh. Let's see what I've got going here. But I need to get something that's more than six for that. Okay. So let's go like this. Gain some health. And Gloom Reaper Hag there. Which is part of the step of playing a card, step D or E, I think. Yes, uh, I will be having a printed out copy of the rules on hand for, uh, for Worlds and all that stuff to make sure that I have it illustrated out. And I will double check with Fletch for that Dark Shaper case. And then also, we're, please have confidence in me. We are also coming up with a, a corner cases list and the explanation for that so that I will have those on hand. I, I should have those on hand in order to know the exact understanding of those types of rulings. So, um, yep, we when it comes time for Worlds, things will be... Uh, ready to go. But I am getting up to speed on a lot of those corner cases of rules. So it's always good to have uh, somebody keeping me accountable. And then at the same time, making sure that uh, the rules are uh, apparent and uh, disseminated appropriately for everybody to be having access and understanding what's going on with them. Uh, question from Aunt Gaming. Will uh, Fletch be judging at Worlds? As far as I know, Fletch is not coming to Worlds. Uh, there are uh, other things going on and uh, scheduling stuff. So uh, I'm not going to be going into it because, you know, it's, it's somebody else's story. But uh, as far as I know, Fletch will not be at Worlds. But uh, he did say that he will be a text message away if there's any ruling that I am not 100% confident in. Uh, let's get that Asperian steel plate going right over there. Uh, there's also the Hantu infinite stall loop you might run into. Uh, yep, uh, that is also being addressed. And I have my decision on that. I just... I need to make sure that my decision is final word on that. So um, for those who aren't sure about, let's see, uh, each of our pleasure stories. Oh, yep, end of the cycle. Whoops. Okay, not looking so good. Mount of Heroes, yep, that one's going to be a problem. So, uh, as soon as I figure out what I'm playing here, then I can go into detail on what my solution, proposed solution for the Hantu Infinite Loop would look like, and then we, uh, we're in the final stages of determining if that's what the outcome's going to be. Uh, let's see... I think I need that there. Actually, I wonder There we go. 
So now we can go Forsaken over there. And if Carl wants to activate Mount of Heroes, it'll still do three damage to, to my board, but it will also then destroy that shard back. And that's a trade I'm willing to make. Uh, okay, so the, the, the infinite Hantu situation, and there are different variations of it, but the, the most common way is a player has Hantu on the board. Oh, excuse me. Uh, and then they play a Stampeding Mongasaur. So what the Stampeding Mongasaur does, says deploy, deal five damage to one of your creatures, deal five damage to an, to an enemy creature. Uh, if the, the player that plays the, the Mongasaur deals five damage to the Mongasaur, then they deal five damage to enemy creature. Uh, then the opponent gets to decide, all right, am I going to pay three life or, or, you know, depending on the level of the haunt to, am I going to pay life or allow that creature to reanimate? Well, then if they allow that creature to reanimate, gee, dang it. We got another shard back in that lane with the Mount of Heroes. And I don't have any reliable removal at this point. Hmm. Well, we can at least go like that. Eight, 10, hmm. No, I think I think we just create havoc. So then uh this could create an infinite loop where the player playing the Mongasaur is continually damaging the Mongasaur and then destroying the all of the opponent's creatures, and then the receiving player is choosing to let the first player reanimate the Mongasaur instead of taking any damage to where this could be an infinite loop once the opponent runs out of creatures to damage and then the the receiving player isn't going to pay health in order to not reanimate the Mongasaur because there's no reason for them to pay health they don't have any creatures left to damage and the player that plays the Mongasaur and has Hantu out isn't going to choose to damage any other creature because it would kill, five damage would kill the level one uh, Hantu, or it's just a disadvantageous play at any level. So then that creates a, a stall where it's just, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna choose this decision. The other person chooses to make the same decision, and then it just goes back and forth. So, um, and, and then if one player is ahead at that point, well, I guess if... Well, if one player is ahead at that point and both players are making the same decision, then it stalls out and whoever's ahead, once we get to uh, time and then turns, that it just, the game would stall out and wouldn't end. And I think that that is a, uh, a not very fun and engaging way to go about playing a, a card game. So then my default would be to not have a situation like that. And my solution to it... Oh, let's see if I can make a comeback here. Nope, can't do it. Because <laughs> I... Hmm. Spite Maiden into Epidemic wouldn't be good. But just straight up epidemic would help. Yeah. So let's go like that. So my my solution to this is based in game theory uh, and not just like thinking about games, but uh, we're talking John Nash and uh, decision charts and equilibrium points. So... Uh, my s proposed solution to this, and it's not final yet, but when the, the decision is made and agreed upon and rubber stamped, then I'll let people know. 
but uh, it's that if we've reached an equilibrium point, then the first player is going to decide how many times they would make decision A versus decision B. So, heck, you could say, I'm going to damage my Hantu one million times, not my Hantu, my Stampeding Mongasaur one million times. Then the replying player would decide their, their single decision is would I allow them to reanimate or would I take the damage? And if I'm going to allow them to reanimate a million times or a million and one times or 10 million times, then we've reached uh, a balance point where then, let's see. Um, hmm, okay, it's going to be three. So let's go like this. Confirm. And then we'll do a combat damage there. Uh, then it would be the, the onus would be on the player that started the loop that had the first decision in this sequence to then make a different choice because it is their decision to have entered in this infinite loop. They decided how many times they wanted to make that same decision. Then it was the responding player's opportunity to make their decision. And then at, after that, you're to the point where now the original player has to make a different decision. And then play would be able to continue, even if it ends up being a disadvantageous choice, like then having to destroy your own Hantu. And my reasoning behind that is it is based in John Nash's world-famous uh, research on game theory and equilibrium points and things like that. And then it also is on the ethical uh, situation of if you are the player or the person who made the decision to get into the situation, then the you're the only one that has an opportunity to respond to make the situation different. Uh, so, yeah, the, the responding player that their decision is what continues the loop, but you're the one that decided to take the turning right versus turning left. And then that led to where you're, you're stuck in the woods now. So, uh, that is my thoughts on that. That's what I proposed. And, uh, in, in the next, uh, couple of days, I, I guess I can't say for certain, so don't quote me on that part of it, but, uh, before worlds is that's when uh the official ruling on that hantu situation is going to be published and, and made made public so that's my decision on it i am not the creator of the game i am not the writer of the rules so my opinion as head of organized play matters but i'm not the the decider in this so uh having other people who are also invested and involved, uh, having them weigh in and then making a final decision in time. Um, so, uh, that's, that's my stance on that. That's my official stance on all of it. And, uh, I know that across the spectrum, everybody's going to have different opinions on it, uh, which is good. That's good to have that, but then that also puts us in a, a, a situation where there has to be an official ruling and we'll see if everybody, well, we'll see what, what comes of it. Okay. What do we got going here? Carl's doing a good job of keeping my Nawadas off, off the field. But I got rid of all the shard backs. So I was able to dodge a lot of the uh, dealing five damage to the entire board. And by dodge, I mean took it. <laughs> Playing Exalt for free. Echoing is really nice. Uh, yep. I, I like the, the multiple echoing creatures and Gathering Storm. I think that's a really savvy combo. Yeah, 
And then that gets bumped up, and it was the first time that I gained health this turn. So then that's where that comes into play. And I've got Army Commander, which I don't know how much that's going to do versus Summon the Swarm right now. Whew. I'm feeling like a Spite Maiden, Virix Embrace, Virix Embrace, Zrath's Will combo for my first play. Ooh, and then God just is adding a little bit more to this discussion. What about Vial, where the opponent kills the board, minus Hantu, takes damage for everything but the Vial? Who gets punished in that scenario, the Vial or the Hantu player? I played a deck with both just to see how much I could proc it, and it was funny how often it came up. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Vile, where the opponent... So... Um... God, just are you saying that the opponent has the vile creature or you with Hantu has the vile creature? Hmm, because that's not going to be good. This, yep, so let's go that. I'll take the damage to do a spell for free. Don't need to do that. But we're going to save that part of it. No, you have the Hantu and the Vile Creature, and the opponent wipes the board minus Hantu. Okay, so this is me processing this real time, that you have... Hantu, and you play a vile creature. Now, vile is a modifying term that says destroy one of your other creatures. So you have the Hantu and the vile creature. So it would destroy another one of your creatures. And then the opponent says, no, you can reanimate that other creature, or... It's funny how... No, you have a Hantu and a Vile Creature, and the opponent wipes the board minus Hantu. I guess I'm I'm still missing... Um... Okay, now, so the Vile is already in play. You killed something else for it. Okay, and then the vile creature is being destroyed. And they, so they keep bringing it back. So then you have to destroy. Another one of your creatures. Um, hmm. 17 there. Oh, and I... That's not what I want. Okay, so putting you in a situation where you have to kill your Hantu, I guess that... I don't see how that ends up being infinite though that just puts you in a situation where you have to make a a disadvantageous decision right i i i would need uh this illustrated out for me cuz i feel like my brain is the vile can kill itself oh it's it's destroy one of your creatures not another one of your creatures okay um, I'm going to have to research so then I can wrap my head around how that looks in a board state. So if the vile creature would just keep killing itself. And then they would constantly let it. Uh, then. Okay, let's see. 
like a gizmo there and then upgrade play it for free so we are going to go let's see because i've got that to spare so i want an oak father and i guess that doesn't matter so much so oak father there and then something to block okay vile can kill itself it's the same problem as the mongosaur but the but the opponent forced the loop not you so would you make them take damage or kill Hantu? Vile creatures in play. And then on the reanimation. So combat, put it in play. Oh, okay. I, I, I see what you're saying there. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to. F I'm I'm starting to understand. That. Uh, well, wait. But did it take out Red Wasteland or not? Oh. Okay, so then, uh, God, just you're bringing up a good point on how this has to be worded for um, ending infinite loops like this. And it's it's not so much a... I know it's it, it probably when you're in the moment of game. Yeah, good game, Carl. Uh, it's not so much a punishment. Like, it, it's... Uh-oh. Okay, lagging a little bit. It's not so much a punishment as it is just the the person that made the decision to enter the loop that has to be the one to make the decision to leave the loop. Uh, so it, it's wording this correctly for it to be an official ruling. So that's, that's part of what uh, I've had other people start to take a look at so then we can have that ironed out. Um, and, and I'll be talking with the powers that be. I'll bring this up tomorrow and Wednesday to have this as a, a high priority um, just to, to get it out in time for Worlds. In that instance, though, who decided to enter the loop? The opponent, right? So the... Because it's combat that's having that creature die, the vile creature. And then the player is choosing to reanimate it versus taking damage. And then it's... Okay. Um, it definitely is tricky. Uh... I am going to have to sit around and probably like on tabletop simulator. <laughs> I know there's going to be salt. I I worked in public education for a decade, so I I know what venom can come my way. <laughs> um Yeah. I so I'm I think tomorrow I'm going to set up some situations in tabletop simulator and try to wrap my head around the acting versus reacting party in this and then uh run it by the people that i need to run it by and by wednesday we should have the the firm decision and the announcement on that so uh i had i struggled to, to say a specific date but uh, i do have a, the organized play meeting is on wednesday so i can bring that up then and have something set in stone at that point. So, um, 
Yeah, because I... It, excuse me. Situations like that need to be not only ruled upon, but codified in the, the ruling. Okay... So this pairing here, this is the, the first Nuada one that I came with. Oh, I meant to switch Forgeborn. Uh, that's okay. So the, the neck cream here is a double cutthroat because having removal is so dang important. And yeah, one of them is a cutthroat shambler. So that kind of is another simple proc of potential life gain. And then we've got the, the vile creature. And then down here, group meal, we've got soul reap. So that is double proccing life gain with beasts. Varna's pact is kind of some soft removal. Virix embrace, wrath will combo. Uh, so this is the first one that I came up with. And in my humble opinion, I think it's the, the best solution to this. Uh, not solution, but the best uh, compliment to the, the Nuada half. Sent you my deck list with Hantu and Vile for testing purposes. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm going to need. Is something like that to help me visualize. I'm a, a visual learner. So uh, something like that is going to help me process and wrap my head around so that I can get the wording of the ruling correct. All right. So here... I'm trying to put enough things in play so then I can uh, do some cutthroating or be able to get some activity with this soul reap, but I don't have a beast in my hand right now. I can, however... Do I want to have Varnus Pact then Group Meal or vice versa? I think I'm going to group meal, then Varna's Pact. Group meal and get that one up. All right. Color of Souls. That one works really well with a lot of the Utera upgrading. I've seen a lot of people playing this in the, the random queue. That's been fun to see. And Varna's packed here, and I'll just go take that one off the board because hopefully those still are going to trade unless the opponent does something nasty. Oh, good call. But I still got multiple creatures out for my cutthroating. And I got both my cutthroat at the same time. <sighs> All right. Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what we can do with this. But I'm pretty sure my opponent's not going to have a creature on the board after this turn. <laughs> Unless they do something brilliant like that. Okay. Cutthroat Shambler, I'll throw it over here. And these two would normally trade. So I'll just do that. And I get one trigger a Shamble. I wish I wouldn't have gotten my Carnivorous Taro at the same time. Ooh, what's there? Bones of Solace, you say? Aha. And... Well, now I don't even need to cutthroat, because I win that trade. So let's Carnivorous Taro and get that set up for what's going to be coming. And let's see what type of Blighted Cersei we have. Ah, that Soul Siphon, yep. I don't remember what the, the Blighted version is, but that where this one is kind of bugged in the client. Uh, oh, and then the, the Health Switcher one. All 
Oh, I've got so many good uh, things when my opponent has stuff on the board, but right now they do not. But, uh, provided this creature stays on the board, I will be able to Cutthroat Shambler. Oh, maybe not. That's a big friend. Wow. Shambling Meba. Well, now I can't take that out of play. Hmm. Because I don't have a level 2 creature on the field. Ooh, touche. Well, then let's Varna's Pact. And let's at least reduce that a little bit. That, that is shockingly large for a, a level 2 creature, especially a shambling one, a 612. I'm impressed. All right, so the Cutthroat Shambler. And I get to play a level 1 or 2 card for free. Let's see what we're going to do with this. Ooh. Let's go Virix Embrace. Oh, no, I should have done that on the Shambler, or the Shambling. Shoot. Ah, Jerch. You old fool. All right. I got to figure out a way to get rid of that now. Hmm. Do I have a level one? I don't even, so that's not going to be able to come back and help me at all. Let's see. Let's go Patriarch's Binding. Gizmo and Spell Sprite to potentially stick around a little bit longer. Because this opens me up to then being able to do Uterodon Mauler here to replace and get a lot of damage coming through. Oh, that's no good. Or I can Vampiric Slime. Which would win that trade, but I actually like doing this a little bit better. So let's go like that. Because then that's going to get large and be dealing 10 damage to my opponent's face, which I'm a fan of. I'll have that bumped up a little bit and then take the ones from Shambling. That's fair. And let's see, I've got no out of there cutthroat demon but i don't have a way to be gaining health so that zaras will might not be helping me out so much unless do i have a level one that i can bring back oh yeah the vampiric slime okay so this might work out after all so i go noada play noada's garden which i'll go there Spell Sprite gets kicked up. Uh, and then we pass. And I'll use my Forgeborn ability to bring back my Vampiric Meba. And then that will allow me to fill all my lanes. I ideally, we'll see what my opponent does in response here. But fill all my lanes, potentially. Soothing Raptor. Yes, I realize I have not used my Forgeborn. So we're going to do that now. 
Vampiric Slime. Thank you very much. And we are going to... Yeah, bring that back here. Oh, no, 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 that's the Roaring Slime. That's not the one I wanted. Okay, Vampiric Slime. <laughs> it switched my slimes up on me. Not I, I thought it was me, but it's slimes. I play so much, I forget. Okay, and then, because I've got my lanes filled, actually, let's play Zras Will first. And then we're going to put that Oak Guardian in play. And let's see if we can cause some havoc here. Almost played the wrong slime. And buffing up all the creatures to be making a trade here. But then taking a lot of a lot of damage there. All right. So I've got another Taro, Feral Instinct, Patriarch's Binding, where I could be getting a, a big minion out. Group meal. Uh at that point, at this point, that one's not doing me a whole lot of a lot of favors, but I think I might go a, a Taro into a uh, feral instinct on my level one taro all right have you go there gain health then each of my taro's proc and then i can potentially give this one breakthrough so you can't just chump block well now i need to in order to take out the Shambling Meba. That's where I saw Meba from. I don't have Mebas. I've got oozes. Slimes. Five, that 14. So that should be it. Yeah, 17 with the breakthroughs. Good game. That that Meba, that level two one is really strong. I liked seeing that. Okay, so we have about 14 minutes left. I think I... Do y'all want to see the, the play mat or do you want to see me play another match? I'll go whichever way because it might take me a minute or two to, to go run down and and uh, get, my, get the play mat. But I'll do whatever the, the chat suggests. Another match on the playmat. <laughs> I don't have that kind of programming skills. Where I, I could bring up the playmat as my backdrop for, for that. I'll see if I can get Lucas to show off the playmat. I'll see if I can get Lucas to show off the playmat. Okay. Technically, we had two votes for, for playing a match. This is again using my number one Nuada deck. Nuada. And I'm very thankful that the, the stream was relatively glitch free, considering we've got storms going on in the area. And uh, I've had uh, mixed results with the internet when there has been rain or other stuff going on. So I'm glad that we were able to have a pretty clean night. Nevron again. All right. Same decks as before. Hmm. What's your favorite set three exalt? Same question for Soulbind. Who? Uh, I think. And therefore, oh no, 
Sir Paper, so if we want to see the playmat, we should watch Lucas's stream and therefore give him more views. Interesting tactic. <laughs> yeah, I, eh, that's my Minnesota nice. I'm trying to compete, but at the same time, trying to be real nice. I actually think, uh, and I forgot to tally the results before this stream, but I do think we're ahead. Because last week's stream, we got so many views right off the bat and then so many people after the fact too like it was really cool to see all the people that were showing up uh and then watching last week's stream on other days so um i will actually i'll make a note to myself to put it in description so when i post this on facebook i'm going to have the the current totals of my views versus lucas's views and uh, where we're at. So, um, yes, thank you for reminding me of that. And he might need the the extra benefit to make this a close match. Okay. Oh, I really should put my, I really should do my shambler. Yeah. I think I need to. Because that breaks even anyways, those two would trade. And then I get this out early. Which I like. And thank you, uh, Viper Dave. I love I love doing this. Uh, I love interacting with people, love playing people. It's so much fun. So, Godres, favorite set three exalt. In all fairness, his last week was Ascension Legends. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. So he's probably ahead because of that. Yep. Because that, I mean, I'm excited for that. I actually think that I played Ascension Legends before I actually played Ascension. And uh, I don't know if I will be able to go back. That Ascension Legends, the, the Legends track that they have, and the uh, way that, that the game has kind of just taken it up a notch, it's, it's really cool. Oh, that's right. Playing Bones of Solace already. So, uh, to, to answer Godress's question... Um, my favorite exalt, I think, is Drone Hive. I I really like the ability to, when you're slaying, putting Gizmo minions out. And I like how that makes Aloyan a little bit more of a combat faction. Uh, so I think that's probably my favorite exalt. Soulbind? I wish that my mental library was able to go through all of the the soul binds let's see if i can pick out okay i i have a special place in my heart for the stegos one so i'm gonna say that one because i know stegos personally and uh i think it's it's really cool that uh to see his card and to have it be dinosaur and then have it have a uh a dinosaur soul bind with it so i just i i think that is is super cool and i finally pulled a uh a stegos deck and it actually had a, a mastodon and i think it had another dinosaur in it too so uh actually ended up in a decent situation dinosaur wise oh and there's a online version uh of ascension legends <laughs> God just introduced him to Nova last year at Gen Con. <laughs> I'm I'm sure I'm sure he appreciated that introduction. Uh, Stegos is a very cerebral player, so I I bet his eyes were open very quickly as to oh no what's this. And and uh, I'm sure that that was a uh, uh, an eye opening experience for him. All right, Carnivorous Taro, right there. Gain some health. But I'm not going to put that Wisp minion there. Because then it would be in the back row. Don't want that. It's going to lead to a bad time. Uh, is there an online version of Ascension Legends? Uh, so it's not like in the uh, App Store or anything, because I know that the regular Ascension is. Um, so that may be coming later. I don't have any inside information on that. Uh, 
not to have a shameless plug for the GameFound campaign, but m there might be more information on the GameFound campaign about that. So I think that would be a good place to to look to see uh, if they're able to have a digital version if they get X amount of uh, people subscribing to it. But I, I know it's it's super fun. I'm excited for it. Um, and it'll be... Ooh. No, let's go Soul Reap. And, but then where do I do it? Or we go Virix to take that out and then that gets bumped anyways. Yep, I think I like that better. Four there. There we go. That gets bumped to survive. Gajus, I was up front from the start and walked him through how stupid it was. Fury shard back too. Oh, <laughs> you just gave him the full crash course, Gajus. <laughs> I don't know if Stegos is going to be there this year, but I really hope so. Uh, a very fun person to, to hang out with and spend time with. And um, yeah, so that is one of my favorite soul binds of the set. <gasps> I need to bring that so I can have them sign it. Yeah. Uh, that'll, th I think that might be a side quest for me is bringing the cards of the people w when I, when I see them. So then we'll be able to, uh, um, I'll be able to have a collection of all the people that have their likeness on a card, have them sign it. Okay. Cutthroat shambler, do your best. Going to destroy another one of my creatures to destroy an opposing creature at the same level. There and there. I gain two health. Carnivorous Taro gets buffed. The Shambler is shambling. I get to put a Wisp minion in that lane. Don't mind if I do. Taro gets buffed. And then at this point, let's just roll it through and put the opponent in a bad spot. Who all uh, in the chat is going to be going to Gen Con? Who all is showing up this year? Gen Con, or heck, if you're in the San Diego area, step on down to Comic Con, say hi to me there. It'll be nice to nice to know who else is going to be showing up. God, just not this year. Wait, was that because you're going to be on vacation or? Yes, Zoe, I'm, I'm, I'm certain you're going to Gen Con. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll be a... This country's too big. Yeah, I hear you, Parker boy. Yeah, Zoe Misery's going to be there, participating in a lot of stuff. Have, oh, that's right. That's right. Having a baby. That should be exciting. Is that the first one? Yeah, hopefully we're getting a lot of people to to show up this year. Stupid kids. <laughs> the kids themselves inherently aren't stupid. All right, and then Carnivorous Taro, level two here. Because it was played in an empty lane, then Nuada. Level two procs, and then each of my Taros get two hits on that. Yeah, first. Gonna be an old man at school functions. First kid, congratulations! That's. I have been told by multiple siblings that that is such a an incredible and rewarding experience. So uh, I'm excited for you, and uh, hopefully you all kind of keep your heads about it and uh, enjoy every step of the process. We're just going to do a little damage there, clear that lane, and then get that Taro up enough to where that will finish off the night. 
<laughs> Park Avoy, it gets better and worse. <laughs> Still, that's very exciting. Congratulations. Easier and more expensive as the years go on, I hear. Says the guy with a 21-year-old and an 18-year-old. <laughs> Running the full gamut there. Nephrons, oof, yeah. <laughs> the I've done a lot of testing with these Nuata decks. Good, good games, yeah. And and this one especially is uh, very powerful. Uh, yeah, and it's still exciting, fun to play. But uh, thank you for for the games. Those are those are good. Uh, good showing. All right, but seeing as how we are at the, the top of the hour, we're getting ready to close up shop, at least for now. Thank you, everybody, for, for joining us this week. As always, you can scan that QR code that takes you to an interactable version of the slide you see here, where you can get so much information on everything that Stoneblade Entertainment does, especially Soul Forge Fusion. Pretty much everything on that screen is clickable once you scan that QR code. So you can go to the Stoneblade homepage, uh, I should update this to have a link to the game found campaign for Ascension Legends, but I know if you check out, uh, the, the Twitter feed that they're posting about that all the time, you can find the digital client on steam. Please leave a positive review about this game. If you enjoy it, it boosts the algorithm, helps other people find it, which is always good. Join the discord. If you haven't already clicking there, I think I updated the link to make it be a, a uh, permanent permanently viable. So then uh, it'll take you to the Discord to get more involved in the Soul Forge Fusion community and the other Stoneblade games going on. Uh, on Forge, I believe the July episode is coming out any day now. We interview Iron Bryce, who actually was on the, the stream, played me in a couple of matches, as the newest Forge Guardian. So we talk about uh, his experience in getting swept up in this game and building the community and kind of a little bit of his backstory, as well as talking about the content that he creates. So it's all good stuff. Very excited to be growing this community, especially other countries, other continents, other time zones. It's so, so great. Thank you everybody for showing up this week and uh, take care. I hope to see many of you in the next couple of weeks. Otherwise I will be on the stream uh, not a week from today, but in two weeks, I think. I think we should be back from Gen Con in time. So I will see you all either in person or in August. Take care, everyone.